Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Amy Sanger. I'm an Associate Professor of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at the University of Minnesota and Medical Director of the Clinical Laboratories at Hennepin County Medical Center. Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on High Sensitivity Troponin. One of the major challenges in cardiovascular laboratory medicine revolves around acute coronary syndromes. Although acute coronary syndrome constitutes a continuum, it is usually divided into non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, or NSTEMI, and ST elevation myocardial infarction, or STEMI, based upon electrocardiogram changes at presentation. Patients with unstable angina are also classified into the acute coronary syndrome definition and present with chest pain or other symptoms without electrocardiogram changes or evidence of myocardial necrosis. Annual statistics estimate there are greater than 600,000 new and more than 200,000 recurrent acute myocardial infarctions, with only approximately 20% of patients experiencing long-standing angina or chest pain. There are over 6 million visits to emergency departments across the United States. A smaller percentage, approximately 2 to 5% of myocardial infarctions are missed in the emergency department. Furthermore, it is reported that only 45 0.8% of patients reach the hospital or emergency department within two hours of symptom onset, and barriers can be logistical, cultural, or due to lack of awareness. Mortality rates for patients over 45 years of age are high and are higher for females compared to males. Notably, the mortality rate is between 18 to 23% within the first year following an MI and 36 to 47% within the next five years. The diagnostic challenge relies on clearly differentiating patients who have an acute myocardial infarction from those who have not and can be sent home. Furthermore, situations are often not black and white, and decisions are often needed about what to do with patients who have slightly elevated troponins but aren't changing. It is critical for patients to be appropriately triaged so an accurate diagnosis and associated treatment plan can occur, which then ultimately impacts the mortality rate. The cardiac troponin complex consists of three regulatory proteins, troponin C, I, and T, that control the calcium-mediated interaction of actin and myosin. Troponin C exhibits no cardiac specificity and therefore cannot be used as a biomarker of necrosis. Both troponin I and T have cytosolic and structural or myofibril pools, with the majority existing in the myofibril fibril pool. Scientific data has demonstrated that after myocardial injury, multiple forms of cardiac troponin exist in both tissue and in blood. These include the TIC ternary complex, IC binary complex, and free I. Numerous modification of these three forms can occur involving oxidation, reduction, phosphorylation, and dephosphorylation, as well as both C and N-terminal degradation. The selection of antibodies for cardiac troponin I assays determines which antibody configurations are detected, but then leads to different recognition patterns. Currently, standardization or harmonization of cardiac troponin I assays has not been achieved. Cardiac troponin is the preferred and superior biomarker to both rule in and rule out myocardial injury and diagnose acute myocardial infarction. Troponin is released into the circulation relatively early after the onset of symptoms, although the timing for a detectable troponin is dependent upon blood flow and when the patient presents to the emergency department. Cardiac troponin concentrations will increase and remain abnormal or above the 99th percentile for several days, depending on how large the myocardial injury is. Elevations of troponin T persist longer than troponin I because it has a greater molecular weight at 37 kilodaltons versus 24 kilodaltons, Analytical sensitivity between assays may still show differences in detectable concentrations between troponin I and troponin T, such that troponin I may be detectable when troponin T is not, irrespective of the half-life. In 2018, the fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction was published. This clinical guideline provides criteria and guidance to improve the accuracy of diagnoses related to myocardial injury. Updates to this document maintain cardiac troponin as the preferred biomarker of myocardial infarction, which it has been for the past two decades. 
Emphasis remains on observing a rise and or fall of cardiac troponin above the 99th percentile. At least one of those troponin concentrations should be above the 99th percentile of the assay, and there also needs to be evidence of myocardial ischemia, being symptoms, ECG changes, pathological Q waves, or imaging evidence. The timing of samples remains critical and serial testing is recommended for interpretation. Based on evidence that even small detectable troponin concentrations reflect incremental risk and indicate myocardial injury, consensus documents recommend that the normal range for troponin be set at the 99th percentile of a normal healthy population. One of the new concepts in the universal definition of MI relates to differentiation of myocardial infarction from myocardial injury although both criteria utilize sex-specific 99th percentiles for troponin. The term myocardial injury should be used when there is evidence of elevated troponin concentrations with at least one value greater than the 99th percentile upper reference limit. The term acute myocardial infarction should be used when there is acute myocardial injury with clinical evidence of acute myocardial ischemia, like symptoms, ECG, or imaging, with a detection of a rise and or fall of troponin. Similarly, at least one of those troponin concentrations has to be above the 99th percentile. The following slides visually depict the differentiation between myocardial infarction and myocardial injury. Again, both criteria involve a cardiac troponin value above the 99th percentile. An acute myocardial infarction requires a rising and or falling pattern of troponin concentrations. From there, the most common types of myocardial infarctions include type 1, which is an MI due to coronary atherothrombosis, and type 2, which is an MI due to imbalance in myocardial oxygen supply and demand. Myocardial injury may have a similar pattern, but if the injury is due to structural heart disease or other comorbidities, then the troponin values may be chronically elevated, or the rise and fall can be less significant than observed with myocardial infarction. Myocardial injury may be due to cardiac conditions such as heart failure or myocarditis, or from systemic conditions such as sepsis, renal failure, or stroke. Some of these diseases or conditions can exist on both sides of this diagram, such as acute heart failure occurring in the context of acute myocardial ischemia, but regardless, abnormal troponin concentrations in the setting of acute and or chronic heart failure are more often categorized better as a myocardial injury condition. What exactly is a high-sensitivity cardiac troponin assay? The definition of a high-sensitive assay evolved through consensus among international experts in the field of clinical chemistry, cardiology, and emergency medicine. A high sensitivity assay has improved imprecision or percent coefficient of variation of less than or equal to 10% at the sex specific 99th percentiles. High sensitivity assays should also have improved analytical sensitivity to detect very low troponin concentrations. Thus, a minimum of 50% of normal individuals above the assay's limited detection for both males and females is required. There are now numerous high sensitivity troponin assays available globally. It is also important to note that the name high sensitivity only reflects the analytical characteristics of the assay and is not a different cardiac troponin being measured. The superior analytical features of high sensitivity assays allowed for development and validation of novel diagnostic approaches in order to expedite the safe rule in and rule out of acute myocardial infarction. For contemporary assays, serial or timed sampling strategies are prolonged and require anywhere from three to four different time points. This is because the assays have less analytical sensitivity. So in order to observe a significant change over time, a larger change in concentration must occur which requires a greater amount of time to pass to observe a rise and or fall. With high sensitivity assays, different rule out strategies can be used, including use of undetectable or below the limited detection troponin concentrations, accelerated serial sampling protocols to shorten the time points required to observe a significant acute change, use of high sensitivity troponin combined with a risk score, also referred to as accelerated diagnostic protocols or ADPs, or a single high sensitivity troponin result can be used, customized to meet a specific clinical need. There are some different recommendations for reporting high sensitivity troponin results compared with contemporary troponin results. The IFCC, AACC Academy, and Universal Definition of Myocardial Infarction 
all universally state that high sensitivity troponin concentrations should be expressed in nanograms per liter and results should be reported in whole numbers. This guidance was put forth as a means to avoid confusion by having unnecessary zeros following the decimal point if the same reporting convention was used for assays not designated as high sensitivity, which report in nanograms per milliliter or micrograms per liter. Therefore, as an example, a contemporary troponin result of 0.014 micrograms per liter would be reported as 14 nanograms per liter if measured with the high sensitivity assay. Adopting this convention also avoids clinical errors in data reporting for both electronic medical records and electronic data transfer, where decimal rounding to zero is a true risk. This recommendation is only relevant to high sensitivity assays because contemporary assays should still report in nanograms per milliliter or micrograms per liter. Another notable difference with high sensitivity troponin assays is the ability to report sex specific 99th percentiles or upper reference limits. There are clear differences in the cardiac physiology between males and females, with males having a greater cardiac mass and a higher incidence of subclinical coronary artery disease. Therefore, it is not surprising that males have higher 99th percentile high sensitivity troponin concentrations compared to females. Health disparities in females with cardiovascular disease are well documented in the literature and outcomes are worse than males. Utilizing an appropriate sex-specific diagnostic cutoff is important to accurately diagnose myocardial infarction in both men and women. Reference interval studies can be tricky to conduct. A minimum of 300 males and 300 females are required to define an upper reference limit for each group. If the laboratory is only verifying a manufacturer's 99th percentile, then only 20 males and 20 females are needed. These normal subjects or volunteers should be representative of your geographic area, have a varied age distribution, and have an ethnic and racial representation consistent with your population. It is also recommended that other criteria be utilized to define normal subjects, such as exclusion of individuals with comorbidities such as cancer, thyroid disease, and diabetes, use of medications such as statins, and or analysis of surrogate biomarkers to detect underlying disease, including creatinine, an estimated glomerular filtration rate, hemoglobin A1C, and natriuretic peptides. It should also be noted that the statistical approach used to calculate the 99th percentile can be influenced by the method utilized. As noted previously, use of a serial sampling strategy aids in differentiating myocardial infarction from myocardial injury. The universal definition of MI supports serial baseline and other time points such as one, two, and or three hours post presentation. Later timing will not miss individuals who are very early presenters to the emergency department. Absolute changes, as opposed to a relative a percent change, appears to be preferable for high sensitivity troponin assays at low concentrations. Accelerated diagnostic protocols and rapid rule out strategies are important to discuss upon implementation to ensure the high sensitivity assay being used has the appropriate clinical sensitivity and specificity. Biological variation, both short term and long term variation, may influence serial sampling as well. There is currently a lack of clear definition of the criteria which defines what a significant change really is, and the delta varies from one assay to the next. The IFCC and AACC Academy recommend that cardiac troponin results should be reported in less than 60 minutes, with turnaround times monitored from the time the specimen is received in the laboratory to reporting in the electronic medical record. Previous recommendations focused on a turnaround time less than 60 minutes based on the time of blood collection to reporting the result. However, gathering accurate data around the timing of blood collection can be a challenge for laboratories. In reality, often the only control the laboratory has for obtaining accurate turnaround time data is from the time the specimen arrives in the laboratory to the final report. That being said, laboratories should strive to make continuous interdisciplinary improvements in troponin turnaround times in order to provide results as quickly as possible so appropriate diagnostic decisions can be made and or treatment protocols can be initiated. Point of care cardiac marker testing is also an area that is commonly debated. A majority, if not all, true point of care devices are conventional in their cardiac troponin analytical sensitivity. There are a limited number of high sensitivity point of care troponin assays available on the market. If the turnaround time goals mentioned previously cannot be met in the central laboratory, 
then point of care testing may be justified only in the emergency department. If point of care is utilized, laboratorians should educate clinicians that a majority of point of care assays are substantially less analytically sensitive, which means patients with a potential myocardial infarction could be missed. Point of care and central lab troponin results are also not interchangeable, and a significant change should not be assessed based on different assays. A major issue for troponin I assays is the lack of standardization among commercial assays and harmonization of troponin I is an ongoing area of effort. It is also important to understand how hemolyzed specimens affect results for point of care troponin assays, particularly if whole blood is used. Furthermore, quantitative results should be reported and ideally the analytical characteristics of the point of care assay should be similar to the central labs troponin assay. Point of care testing may also be necessary in rural or small hospital settings in order to provide appropriate laboratory testing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When utilizing a high sensitivity troponin assay, it is critically important to understand the assay you are using. The IFCC Committee on Clinical Applications of Cardiac Biomarkers website provides timely updated information about all troponin assays, including high sensitivity, contemporary, and point of care assays. The tables contain information about assay antibody configurations, analytical sensitivity, limited detection, percentage of normal individuals detected, appropriate specimen type, and 99th percentiles. In addition, detailed information about specific analytical interferences, such as hemolysis and biotin, are provided for high sensitivity troponin assays. These details are all critical to know because one of the major challenges when using high sensitivity troponin assays is the ability to distinguish acute from chronic myocardial injury. And the analytical characteristics of the assay become an essential aid in being able to accomplish this. For example, a troponin assay with greater analytical imprecision will require a larger serial change over time to be significant compared to a troponin assay, which is very precise and can distinguish between a significant serial change versus analytical noise. There are several key points to remember about high sensitivity troponin. First, high sensitivity troponin assays are defined by the analytical characteristics such as superior analytical sensitivity, the ability to measure troponin concentrations in greater than or equal to 50% of normal males and 50% of normal females, and improved precision at the 99th percentiles, which should be a coefficient of variation less than or equal to 10%. Results should be reported in whole numbers with sex-specific 99th percentiles, and serial changes are optimally interpreted using absolute changes as opposed to relative changes in concentrations over time. Second, an acute myocardial infarction can generally be safely ruled out within three hours using evidence-based diagnostic pathways or strategies which utilize high sensitivity troponin results with ECG findings or validated risk scores. However, a single troponin result does not equal a diagnosis. Results must always be interpreted in the context of the patient's clinical presentation and scenario. Acute changes in high sensitivity troponin are essential for interpretation and diagnosis of either myocardial infarction or myocardial injury. Serial changes are dependent upon the high sensitivity troponin assay used. A majority of point of care assays are not designated as high sensitivity and therefore are less precise and have inferior analytical sensitivity. Point of care results are not interchangeable with central laboratory troponin results. Finally, education about the potential advantages and disadvantages of high sensitivity assays is needed, including discussions surrounding the evidence supporting their clinical use. Multidisciplinary collaboration at a minimum, including laboratorians, cardiologists, and emergency medicine physicians is essential to define institutional testing practices and protocols using high sensitivity troponin. Thank you for joining me on this pearl of laboratory medicine on high sensitivity cardiac troponin. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.